All right. So it's very difficult for me to check my own sound. So please object if there's anything wrong. All right, I'm getting thumbs up. That's very good. So hello, good uh, afternoon, everyone. So some of you might have seen me sneaking around the room pretending to know about AV equipment. Um, my name is Camila. I'm a PhD student. Uh, I'm working with Madeline and her team here in Copenhagen at the State Museum Institute. And I'm affiliated with the PREDICT Center for Molecular, Molecular Prediction of Inflammatory Bowel Disease at Aalborg University. So I'm working with Madeline and her team to hopefully elucidate some really interesting uh, metabolic signatures for this inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction to another option for working with your large complex uh, data sets. Let me just see if I remember. Oh. Yeah, brilliant. Ah, right. So some of you may already have heard about cytoscale. Um, well, let's use it yeah, sorry. Uh, right, some of you may already have heard about Cytoscape. So it's for visualizing, but also for integration of your big uh, complex data sets. Uh, another example of this, uh, like we've seen previously. Um, so, oh, here we go, sorry about that. So for those of you who don't know, Cytoscape uh, was originally created by uh, uh, the Institute of Systems Biology in Seattle, so all the way back in 2002. Um, since then, it's become a large open source platform, and it's uh, now managed, shall we say, by a large uh, consortium of different institutions that collaborate on this. Um, so like some of the examples we've seen already, this is for analysis, but also very much indeed for, animal, uh, for visual, visualization of your complex uh, data sets. So indeed, the main point of this, or big point of this, is that for visual, to, to visualize these complex networks is actually going to give you a more intuitive uh, chance of both overview, but also working with your data and for easier interpretation as well. Other than that, you can also integrate these data with uh, additional uh, attributes, so uh, whatever this may be, additional information, also from databases like we've seen previous examples. So, uh, this allows for for like further exploration, and it's going to be much more intuitive for you than having a large table of data. Um, not exactly very visual for you to to move around. And so, when you do these molecular networks, you actually have a chance to zoom in on anything that is visually interesting to you. Uh, connections that you didn't think you would find in this. So what I've linked to, and you will all get access to the slides if you don't already have, is um, an article here about Cyberscape uh, for a bit more background information for anyone interested. Um, so it is not only useful for us, but uh, complicated networks, you can find this all over biology. I'm a cellular biologist, not a data scientist or anything like that. So for me, it's interesting that you can also use this in so many other connections. So you can visualize to like reduce the complexity of these data sets, as I've said, for more intuitive uh, interpretation and, and exploration. So this can be for pathways. This could be for like signaling pathways. Uh, this could be for metabolic pathways. You can also visualize uh, interactions that could be protein, protein, protein ligand, protein uh, um, molecular domain, all these things. Correlation of uh, expression of genes. And then finally for what we're Primarily looking on this course here is the similarity. So this could be sweet sequences, but in our case also uh, tandem mass spectral similarity, of course. Uh, as a bit of a fun fact, I've been told, or I could read uh, on Cytoscape web page, that it's new used uh, in fields of epidemiology or social science. So it really is very, uh, very workable. And another link that I've added here for anyone interested in trying Cytoscape is in the corner here for their tutorials. It's really quite extensive. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of demonstrations that you can give a try. Uh, today, for more practical demonstration, I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of Daniel in, in a brief moment. 
who has much more experience with the actual um, using of the program than I do. Um, I just want to say a few more words. Uh, basically, that you get these large complex network, you can edit it a lot for, for your own preferences. You can color nodes, um, so that I forgot to say here that you can color the nodes, you can get it to show you weighted edges. So what, if you want the edges to show that the nodes interact or don't, uh, depending on what type of data you have with you um, and are interested in seeing. So you can really manipulate this very much to your own liking. I'm sorry for the quality of the picture here, but you can also suddenly see something that was unexpected, a connection that you were not expecting to see. And this way, you will, this will give you more insight into the type of data that you have and how it is uh, similar uh, in ways that were unexpected. Um, a lot of layouts for you to play with. And uh, when it comes to that exactly, I can say that Cytoscape is, is divided into what they call Cytoscape Core. So this has a lot of basic features for integration of this data, like I said, analysis and then visualization. For more specialized types of analysis, uh, they have now an app store. Previously, they called this plugins. Uh, this is like for additional types of layout, specialized analysis, another file format that you want to use that someone else has also had to use before. Um, most of these apps are community developed, so someone else has been in need of this uh, function for Cytoscape and have, the, have then um, added this app for others to use in this uh, in Cytoscape app store. Most of the stuff that from there is free to uh, download and use, um, and as I say, community developed. So it's always worth them to see if someone else has had a similar issue to you. All right. Um, so for now, Daniel will give you a bit of a more of a hands-on tour. Um, if there's any questions for me, otherwise I will hand it over to Daniel.